If you've not already heard, the infamous subreddit Female Dating Strategy has removed itself from Reddit, opting instead to operate on a private website. That's not a particularly surprising result. Reddit has been very obviously purging any form of controversial content from their website to better appeal to advertisers and potential investors. Given this not-so-momentous event, I figured it might be interesting to dive into female dating strategy and to try to give it something approximating an impartial look. Along those lines, for the last two weeks, I've been knee-deep in female dating strategy. I, admittedly someone who they would call a low-value male, have been spending countless hours reading their posts, listening to their podcast, and reading their handbook. During that time, I discovered people who were fundamentally hurt, angry, and lashing out at men. I discovered sadness lurking behind angry screeds and semi-helpful life advice. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Here's what I learned during my research. Understanding what female dating strategy is requires understanding some of their foundational principles, so let's start there. One of the better sources for the original female dating strategy mindset is their handbook. This handbook is basically the female version of the so-called Red Pill Handbook. In fact, both handbooks share a lot of commonalities. Both handbooks are loose collections of posts by random anonymous authors purporting to be experts in the world of dating. Both handbooks also weave together generic self-help advice and assertions about the dating world. For example, both handbooks recommend being independent and not needing dating, but both handbooks also recommend keeping multiple romantic partners on the hook at the same time. Also, both handbooks use weird terms for things they like and don't like. For example, while the Manosphere uses the terms alpha and beta, female dating strategy uses the terms high-value male and low-value male. Now, as I indicated before, the female dating strategy handbook contains a lot of write-ups from a lot of different authors. Despite the many authors, the handbooks helpfully outlines the female dating strategy mindset in six key points. First, they believe in being a high-value woman. Second, they argue that if a man isn't chasing you, he's not that into you. Third, they argue that most straight men aren't relationship material. Fourth, they assert that as women, they have the responsibility to be ruthless in evaluating men. Fifth, they assert the idea that sex should not happen before commitment has been established. Sixth, and finally, they assert that generous men are a non-negotiable. To be candid, I don't have immediate problems with any of these points. Even though they come off as lacking in nuance, they're generally fairly reasonable. That said, there's a lot more in the handbook that is, well, messed up. Reading the Female Dating Strategy Handbook is basically like reading the manifesto of an angry group of women who love to make extreme and wholly unsupported statements. For example, on page 93, an author claims that men are basically never too busy or overwhelmed to text back, and it's a reflection of their lack of respect for women. Of course, that's pure nonsense. For example, I love my relatives dearly, but it can sometimes take me time to text them back because I'm legitimately busy or distracted. Hilariously, this claim directly contradicts page 95 of the handbook, which claims that a man being extremely fast texter is a red flag. For those of you who are curious, other alleged red flags include grinning, having pictures of children, even your relatives, and being too confident. As another example, pages 41 through 42 of the handbook suggest that a woman never drink on the first few dates because they might need to judge a man's character with an alert mind. Of course, the idea that they might be able to exercise such self-control and just have one or two drinks seems to escape the author. I should note that this no-drink rule seems to also apply to coffee as well. According to page 196 of the handbook, quote, Men who do coffee dates tend to be more nerdy, unassuming, have dad bods, or poor social skills, etc. A lot of them are broke, too. Later, the handbook on page 150 asserts that women should never, quote, marry a man with a lower income slash income potential than you, citing Britney Spears as proof. Stepping back even beyond the extreme assertions made by the handbook, it's extremely clear the authors are, simply put, angry at men. For example, referring to page 84 of the handbook, the, an author purports to describe 30-year-old men. Quote, the average 30-year-old male already has a receding hairline. His face has already begun to bloat from the excessive alcohol usage and poor diet. A flat tire is already beginning to form around his midsection. He has premature wrinkles, sun damage, and uneven skin tone. Similarly, on page 90, the handbook claims that, quote, men make it their business to devalue anything and everything women contribute that doesn't directly benefit them. Later, on page 121, an author asserts that men in friendships with women are, quote, keeping tabs on female friends, getting off on having some access to their life, a lot of actively trying to get romantic or sexual attraction from female friends. And much later on page 167, the handbook indicates that all men should be treated like a potential rapist. This introduces a common theme within the female dating strategy mindset. Pain. It's abundantly obvious that many of the authors of the handbook must have been hurt by men, and are looking for ways to prevent that pain in the future. Now, I'm only scratching the surface here, and highlighting some particular themes of this handbook. 
There are plenty of other issues with a handbook not worth going into. To provide some examples, the handbook seems hyper fixated on using celebrities to prove their point. As just one example, pages 48 through 49 of the handbook purport to list examples of celebrities who knew immediately that their wife was the one. Hilariously, not all of those are the best examples. The list includes Kanye West, now divorced, and also Alex Rodriguez, who is also divorced. The handbook is also full of typographical errors, logical inconsistencies, and just plain dumb content. For example, page 42 uses the term 90 minutes to an hour, which bothers me way more than it probably should. Stepping away from the handbook for a bit, I really can't give anything close to a comprehensive discussion of female dating strategy without talking briefly about the subreddit, which I indicated before was recently closed in favor of a Wix-based website. The female dating strategy subreddit was pretty much ground zero for man-hating on Reddit. Don't believe me? Let's go through a few posts, just to give you a taste for the tenor. In this post, posters make fun of a woman who was praised for giving her fiancé a kidney. In another post, this user claims that men with, quote, J names are toxic. In another post, the user claims that men can't be depressed because they have testosterone. In yet another post, comprising a, quote, scroat bingo, red flags include video games, being an open book, the word adventures, fishing, and a man being friends with his ex. In this post, a poster warns others about, quote, beard fishing. That is, that men might pretend to have a nice chin by growing a beard. In another post, a poster claims that men use jargon to intentionally confuse women and to find an excuse to mansplain. Of course, I'm just scratching the surface here. I have a veritable pile of these posts, all equally angry and all equally cringy. This anger might come from some pretty obvious places. Analyzing user overlap between female dating strategy and other subreddits indicates that the posters were likely over 30, if not also over 40 potentially had a history of infidelity on the part of their spouse or significant other, were possibly child-free, and likely had an unhealthy focus on hating fake Instagram influencers and plastic surgery. You know, in other words, they were a bunch of cool wine aunts. Along those lines, the theme here is clear. Many of the posters on female dating strategy were hurt by men, and they're deeply scarred by it. In other words, even though the posts talk about all men, I don't think the posters are talking about all men. Most of the time, I think they're talking about specific men, uh, the ones that hurt them in the past. Regardless, given all of this negativity and hate, it should be thus no surprise that this subreddit was quickly pushed off Reddit. The subreddit was extremely toxic, to the point of being poison for advertisers or investors. That said, the subreddit was voluntarily removed from Reddit by its moderators, who likely read the tea leaves and saw the incoming ban on the horizon. Now, according to the Female Dating Strategy website, the move was motivated by a variety of things. The overwhelmingly male user base of Reddit, the harassment of women on Reddit, the presence of violent female mutilating sexual content on Reddit, the presence of certain moderators, and the like. That said, there's a rumor floating around that the real reason female dating strategy was kicked off Reddit is a bit more complicated. Female dating strategy was seemingly run by old school feminists, who are overwhelmingly so-called trans-exclusionary radical feminists, or uh, TERFs. That's a big problem for Reddit, whose staff seem to decidedly transgender, or at least pro-transgender. In other words, there's a good argument to be made here that all or portions of the reason why female dating strategy left Reddit might relate to the fundamental definition of the word female in female dating strategy. In any event, the new website is more or less the same, albeit on a new and extremely buggy codebase. Moving on, as part of preparing for this video, I also listened to tens of hours of the Female Dating Strategy podcast. Needless to say, it's perhaps the worst possible thing to listen to while weightlifting. I literally felt weaker the entire time. My gains were sacrificed for this nonsense. In any event, the Female Dating Strategy podcast is basically a talk show that applies the female dating strategy mindset to various topics. Specifically, four women discuss various Reddit posts and recent news and apply a female dating strategy spin on it. As of right now, and to the best of my research, these women are making approximately $5,000 a month on Patreon, producing the show. Now, I won't play a lot of clips of the show, as a lot of it is exactly what you would expect. Calling men scrotes, complaining about low-value men, and generally whining about the world dating. It's honestly a bit disappointing. I expected some bombshell revelations or anger, but the vast majority of it was just uh, salty. Four very clearly salty women venting about the difficulties of dating. These f***s, man. Like, this is just ridiculous. So this is a podcast that initially started as a subreddit. Make of that what you will. And the subreddit is a female exclusive space where women just go to f*** about men and cry and moan, as I said, as fem cells do. The funniest episode by far is one involving a Reddit poster who claimed to be a hikikomori. In that episode, the women have to keep googling various Japanese terms, and at one point have a somewhat spirited discussion about what EverQuest is. Spoiler, they get pretty confused. I got into EverQuest and spent hundreds of hours in that game. 
Oh my gosh. Wait, Rodi, what is EverQuest? <laughs> um, it was another like early internet game. I remember my, my brothers went through an EverQuest phase. Oh, where oh. it was like it was, but it was for children. So it's like Minecraft of the early two thousands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was like, if I'm not mistaken, it was like uh, for children, <laughs> and it just got taken over by. It's like a, a a role playing video game that doesn't ever end. Oh, so it's called EverQuest. Is it like a what's the world like? A open world game versus like a. Okay, I'm looking at it. Oh yeah, multiplayer online role playing game. Okay, cool. I think South Park did a pretty funny episode about it where it was a bunch of kids playing it and then they kept getting beat up by some, yeah, some neat, some like... Some old, weird old men. Yeah, some middle-aged, overweight guy living in his mom's basement covered in Cheeto dust. Like there's, it was actually a whole trope and a meme for a while because <laughs> like the kids wanted to play and they could never play because the middle-aged neats would just like go around killing them and being dicks to them all the time. Oh, okay. Right? And everybody being like, now that it's jogging my memory, I remember it being like a huge online controversy because it was like, well, the kids never get to have a good time on this game because the middle-aged losers keep taking it over. So he was probably one of those. Well, You do actually learn a lot about these women through the podcast episodes, though. For example, one woman offhandedly complains about her father allegedly abandoning her family to marry some sort of Asian mail-order bride. This is the same woman who seems to have plenty of stories about dealing with cruel boyfriends in the past. Yet again, the central theme reemerges. Female dating strategy women have seemingly been hurt by men, and their anger towards men always seems particularly focused on the specific men that hurt them in the past. That said, what I think is most telling about the female dating strategy mindset happens in their quote, best and worst of 2021 episode. In that episode, the hosts are tasked with, among many other things, trying to find the quote, most high value male. Perhaps predictably, the women can't name a single one. In fact, when one of the hosts suggests one man, a man who supported his wife through a cancer diagnosis, the other hosts are quick to shut that down, asserting that the man is likely abusive or something like that. I want to nominate that amazing guy who stood by his girlfriend's cancer treatment. He massaged her, entertained her, like made her meals, and organized a parade for her. I think that is all like well and good, but it just goes to show just how low like, the bar is for men. Like, how many women stay with their husbands who are sick and take care of them and they don't get any recognition if a man does that? Again, because we're used to men leaving their wives when they get cancer. There's even a study on it. So, yeah, when a man doesn't abandon his wife or girlfriend, it's like, wow, he's such a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. And then we had another one of the man in his kid's TikTok video. He still takes his wife out and gets excited for their date nights after 20 years of marriage. Again, that's sweet, but that should be the bare minimum. Um, so, <laughs> it's honestly quite telling that we're sort of scraping the barrel here with the HVM nominations. I said it's tough because sometimes uh, the guy can do something publicly that looks high value, but be a total screw behind the scenes. So some of it is everyone. John Cena. Yeah, right. So some of it is everyone's hesitancy to crown someone a high value male just based on small snippets of their life, right? Because true. In other words, even with the preparation and the benefit of a crazy number of listeners, none of the other four hosts could identify a single man who they could even begin to describe as high value, suggesting they view all men as fundamentally low value men. In other words, the podcast is pretty much no better nor worse than the handbook or the subreddit turned website. So let's put all of this together. What can one learn from spending countless hours deep in the very pink weeds of female dating strategy? At least on one hand, as I indicated before, female dating strategy is not all that bad of an idea. At least in my opinion, there's absolutely nothing wrong with telling women to be high value, to expect more from men, or the like. I wouldn't have an issue with it if it was just that. That said, in practice, it's overwhelmingly clear that female dating strategy is about much more than empowering women. After reading countless posts, the entire handbook, and listening to tens of hours of the podcasts, it is my opinion that what fundamentally animates female dating strategy is an underlying hatred towards men. This all seems to directly originate from bad past experiences. The posters and commenters on female dating strategy always seem to fixate on bad past experiences with men, as if it reflects on masculinity as a whole. As such, when they say men, what they really mean is men that hurt them in the past. This leads to some pretty extreme outcomes. Specifically, thanks to this deep pain, the women on female dating strategy conclude that men are fundamentally flawed and manipulative, that women must be constantly on guard around men, and that some elusive high-value man, which they can't even identify or define, will eventually show up. But stepping away from the pain for a moment, what I think is also going on here is a form of mutual escalation. 
As I suggested before, female dating strategy isn't all that different from the red pill. Both are angry at the opposite sex, both have stupidly long handbooks full of unsupported assertions about the dating world, and both attempt to polarize their adherents into strategically exploiting others during dating. What I suspect is happening is that both sides are feeding one another. It's pretty obvious that both sides are watching one another's websites and subreddits, getting angry at what they see, and then reacting by creating even more vitriolic posts. This is a dangerous cycle. As losers from each side careen into increasingly extreme positions, they delude others into joining them. Young men shouldn't be listening to the jaded and angry red pill types allegedly going their own way. And in a similar vein, young women shouldn't be listening to jaded and angry female dating strategy posters who promise an elusive high-value male at the end of a tunnel of anger and self-importance. So what can we learn from this? Honestly, I think the best lesson for men that you can learn from female dating strategy reflects back on the whole world of the red pill, men going their own way and stuff like that. Dating is frustrating, and the world can be lonely. Angry online screeds about how horrible women are can sometimes feel cathartic. In the same sense, angry online screeds about how horrible men are can, I'm sure, feel cathartic. That's especially the case if you've been hurt by someone in the past, as almost all of us have. That said, what you absolutely must remember is that these people writing these online screeds are huge losers with massive chips on their shoulders. They're not good people who are looking to help you. They are deeply hurt people who are looking to make you angry and defensive, just like they are. Now, I'm honestly not the right person to give you dating tips or tricks. That said, what I can tell you is this. Treating anyone, potential romantic partner or not, with respect and kindness is going to go far better than listening to female dating strategy or the red pill. It's much better to be a good person and be hurt than be a jaded and angry person and hurt other people. Thank you very much for watching this video. I look forward to your feedback in the comments.